In this lecture, we'll discuss simple linear regression and its relationship with causal inference. Linear regression is commonly used in applied research. This is one of the most frequently used uh, statistical method. We'll explore how to use linear regression for causal effect estimation. In particular, to build the intuition, we we're going to focus on the application of simple linear regression, which has only one uh, predictor. Remember that the regression is an estimation, it's a tool to estimate the conditional expectation function of response outcome variable y given a set of predictors x. So it's a conditional expectation of y given x, which I write as a function of uh, a function f of x. Okay. In the linear regression, we assume that f of x is linear in x, so we have uh, beta times x where beta is uh, a vector of coefficients. The question is that uh, when can we interpret these coefficients as causal effects? The statistical models cannot distinguish, uh, in, in itself, cannot distinguish between causality from association. So it requires some um, assumptions in order for us to be able to interpret these um, parameters as causal effects. One way to think about this is to write the causal model as a structural equation model. So here, I'm writing the potential outcome, y of t, as a linear function of the treatment status t. Okay, a simple linear function of alpha plus beta times t plus epsilon i, where the epsilon i is the error term. The t will take a value of 0, 1. The error term is usually assumed to have mean 0, but this is not really an assumption because you include the intercept alpha. So it's, it's just a normalization. Now we see that this uh, model assumes no interference between units because the potential outcome is only written as a function of your own treatment status, not the function of the treatment status of others. We also see that um, expected uh, potential outcome under the control conditions. So if I plug in in this, this equation t equals 0, then we have alpha plus epsilon i, but we know that the expectation of epsilon i equal to 0. And so uh, expect, uh, expectation of the potential outcome under the control conditions is going to be equal to alpha. So the intercept represents the mean potential outcome under the control condition. We can also see if I plug in t equal 1 and t equal 0 into that equation, take the difference, then that equals to beta, uh, regardless of what unit you are doing this calculation for, because you have epsilon i canceling out, so the difference is going to be always beta, which suggests that um, this model, as it's written, assumes a constant additive unit causal effect. That is, each unit i has the same treatment effect beta. Now, that's a very restrictive model, so we wish to uh, relax this assumption by considering heterogeneous treatment effect model. And I'll write that model here. It's very similar to the model above, except that now the beta coefficient has a subscript i, which suggests, which implies that the treatment effect can vary across units. Okay. Now, how does this relate to um, the simple linear model, well, we can rewrite this model by introducing the mean um, average streaming effect. So the average streaming effect, beta, which is the mean of beta i. Okay? So beta is defined as the expected value of beta i. The expectation is taking over units. So it's the average streaming effect. Okay? And if I add and subtract this beta times t, okay, then what you see is the same linear regression as above, except a slightly different error term, new error term, epsilon i of t. Okay, so I can write the same equation as alpha plus beta times t plus the new error term, which is actually a function of the treatment status t. Okay, so when the t equal, little t equals zero, then we have usual error, uh, error term, epsilon i. But when the treatment uh, t equal one, when the treatment status, um, is equal to 1, then we have the error term plus the effect deviation of the individual level effect, beta i, from its mean, the beta. Okay. So 
So what this says is that if, uh, if I make the error term uh, different across different treatment conditions for any given unit, then I can accommodate the heterogeneous treatment effect. And the beta, um, as before, um, represents the average treatment effect, aligned for different individuals to have different treatment effects. Now we can also see that uh, expectation of this new error term, epsilon i t, is equal to zero, whether t equals zero or one, okay? If the t equals zero, it's equal to epsilon i, so it's, uh, it's the mean is zero. Uh, if the t equal one, you have the deviation from the mean beta i minus beta, but that has expectation of zero, and hence the um, error term, this new error term has a mean zero regardless of the treatment condition. We can also see that uh, alpha intercept term has the same interpretation as before, um, that is the average potential outcome under the control condition. So what I've shown you is that we can write the, um, we can connect the linear model to uh, causal model by writing the modeling the potential outcome as a linear function of the treatment. And it can actually accommodate uh, heterogeneous treatment effect by writing the error term um, to be different um, the, between the treatment control condition. When we do that, the coefficient for the treatment, the beta, represents the average treatment effect where the uh, individual level treatment effect may be different across units. Now, how do we identify uh, this parameter alpha and beta? In a standard linear regression um, you know, textbook, you learn this strict exogeneity assumption, where uh, essentially the error term epsilon i is independent of the predictor t, the treatment. Okay, so here it's, I'm writing in the general notation where the big T is a, uh, is a vector of the treatment status. And since this epsilon i and um, the treatment is mean dependent, um, you can just drop the t and it equals the marginal mean of epsilon, which is equal to zero by assumption. Okay, so that's the usual sort of strict, strict exogeneity assumption we learn in uh, linear regression class. And under this assumption, that the least squares estimate uh, beta hat is unbiased for beta. Now the question is, how does this assumption relate to causal assumption? Remember, in the, we are dealing with randomized experiments, so the treatment is randomized, which means is that vector of t, this is a treatment assignment across the end units, is independent of the set of potential outcomes. What this suggests is that if I wanted to calculate the expected value of the potential outcome for any given uh, little t, um, 0, 1, because the potential outcomes are independent of the treatment assignment, I can condition on any value of the treatment assignment t. And in particular, I can condition on the same little t as the potential outcome. This is convenient because if, uh, if the treatment is assigned to little t, the potential outcome y of t is equal to the observed treatment. So I can just simply drop the potential outcome notation and write this as a conditional expectation of the observed outcome given the treatment status t equal little t. And we know that according, under this model, this is the linear function alpha plus beta t. Okay. Similarly, if you recall that this new error term under the heterogeneous treatment effect model is simply a difference between the potential outcome and its mean minus alpha minus beta t, then uh, we can show that uh, new error term is also independent of the treatment assignment because it's in the, you know treatment assignment is independent of the potential outcome, so uh, it's also independent of the new treatment uh, new error term, okay? and hence uh, exogeneity assumption also hold with respect to this new uh, error term that depends on the treatment status. We can also think about the random sampling of units uh, in, the, in the experimental uh, design where, that, where the, such sampling is uh, possible. What that means is that the potential outcomes are uh, independently identically distributed from some population P. 
In other words, you can also think of that as error term, potential error terms, epsilon of 1 and epsilon of 0 is um, IID uh, from some other, some population. And we can also think of this as an independence across observations. Okay, so these random sampling of units and randomization of the treatment, which is a part of the design, part of the study design, is related to um, the assumptions that are often made in the linear regression context. Now consider a randomized control trial with binary treatment. The least squares estimators um, can be obtained by regressing y on uh, intercept and t. And it turns out the estimated intercept alpha hat is the same as the mean outcome for the control group. So this makes sense because as we uh, discussed earlier that the alpha it represents the average out mean out potential outcome under the control condition. So it's basically the sample uh, equivalent of that. The beta hat is actually equal to the difference in means. And this also makes sense because beta can be interpreted as the average treatment effect. So it turns out the regression, these squares estimator is exactly the same as difference in means estimator. Therefore, alpha hat and beta hat that's obtained by these squares are unbiased for expected value of mean pot uh, potential outcome under the control condition as well as average streaming effect uh, respectively. And we can draw a similar conclusion if the treatment variable is a categorical treatment. In that case, you would regress the outcome on the dummy of the each category of the treatment variable. And then the coefficient represents um, the average potential outcome under that condition. When the t is continuous, the linear model would assume that y of t potential outcome is linear in the treatment. Now, the interesting question, which we'll di discuss, is that what about standard errors? So the point estimates are exactly what we would get if we do standard Neyman's analysis. We will use the difference means estimator to estimate the average streaming effect. And if I regress y on t, then I get this exactly the same answer. But we also want to com compute the standard errors. So what would happen uh, if we use standard errors obtained under standard linear regression uh, context.